Hello viewers, are you having problem making a well-fitted female trouser? You need to watch this video to the end. I used to be like you, having problem, having issues with making a well-fitted female pants. And I started this research on how to really make my trouser in a way that is going to be well-fitted without any bulge at the crotch, having the crotch well-seated and every other other part of the trouser well fitted on my body until i came across the paris school of fashion trouser table this table has transformed my trouser game i will add the link for you to get this table on the description box you can click it to get the table anytime you want to make your own trouser Pants. Please ensure you get the table from the description box before you start start drafting this trouser pattern as it's going to be a guide for you to draft this pattern effectively. So let's get to our drafting right away. I'm going to be drafting this trouser pattern using the Laferry trouser table to do my drafting and here on my um paper right now i have i have drafted some lines which i'm going to be explaining on this paper i'm going to be drafting my front and my back pattern uh, trouser pattern on this same paper so i have my waist line and this is my crotch line and my hem line this is the hem line so I'm going to be explaining how I got those lines. So from this waistline to this place, that's the length of my trouser. And this is the space, the hemming allowance that I added to it. So I have 44 inches length. Then my crotch, how did I get my crotch depth? I divided my waist, my hip into four. So that's what gave me this crotch, my crotch depth, which I have highlighted here already. Now I'm going to input my waistline, my waist, uh, my hip line. So from the crotch line, I'm going to, based on La Ferry's uh, table, I'm going to input my hip line on this point. Which is two inches above the crotch line. Please, it is not the same for all measurements. So, for you to get your hip line for the measurement you are working with, please check the lateral table in order to be able to know where to input your hip line for the measurement you are working with very very important it's not universal for everybody so okay now i have my hip line so when i start uh, started this drafting i left five inches from the edge of my paper to this to get this border line so that is very very important because i'm inputting i'll be inputting my back as well on this paper that's why I left five inches on that side. So from that border line now, I'm going to input my hip measurement on this line. So my hip is 42. And when I divide my hip divided by four, notice that I'm inputting this hip measurement on my crotch line, not on the hip line. I'm inputting it on the crotch line, which is 10 inches. 10.5 inches sorry so i've inputted my 10.5 inches and that 10.5 inches now according to our table said i should reduce my hip with 0 0.75 why am i doing that in order to have a good fitting so i'm going to reduce my hip by 0 0.75 please note it's not universal for every measurement you have to check your measurements and know where it falls so this is i'm taking away 0 0.5 inches 
from my hip measurement which will take me here so i'm going to measure what i have left so i have seven points i have nine points i have nine point five nine point seven five left so i'm going to input i'm going to take that i'm going to take that to my waist line so i'm going to input it here i'm going to square it up like this i'm going to square it up like this i'm going to square it up this way so you can see what i've done i did my hip divided by four and i reduced it by 0 0.75 based on the table guideline that i'm using to draft this so next that i'm going to do now i'm going to find i want to i want to input my uh i want to input my crotch extension so so for me to get my uh, crotch extension i'm going to find i'm going to divide my measurement from here to here which is 9.75 i'm going to divide it by four so whatsoever i get from it then i'll insert it here as my cross extension so now i have 9.75 when i divide 9.75 into four i have 2.4375 so i'll just mark my 2.4 around here so i'll just mark it faintly now i'm going to reduce that measurement with 2 cm that means from that point i will go back with 2 cm so which is i'll mark it here so this is my actual measurement so after getting that measurement i'm also going to look at this point I'm going to also this is 10.5 I'm also going to divide it into four so I'm going to divide it into four this line that connects my waist and the crotch so when I divide it into four you can see the way I'm folding my um tape into four so I'll get it so now this is what I have. I have 2.6. So I'm going to mark it up here. So I'm going to mark that measurement up here. Then I'm going to connect my crotch with my pattern master. Like I'm doing right now. You can see it just a little bit so this is my front crotch extension now i want to work on the upper part of my pattern so i'm going to reduce my center front and i'm going to do a fitting on my center front now to do my fitting i'm going to my center front lowering based on my um based on the table is 1.5 so what that means is that i'm going to come down to come down 1.5 inches like i'm doing right now then the fitting is 2.5 cm please don't get it twisted together lowering is 1.5 inches why the fitting is 2.5 cm and please always remember that this is not universal it is based on your measurement according to our table so my 2.5 cm is here do you understand so i'm going to also do the 2.5 here So what that means is that I am going instead of connecting my 
this is my crotch uh, extension to this place i have lowered it down so my connection is going to look like so i'm going to connect this lowering and fitting to this place the way i'm doing now you can see what i have so my i'm going to take my waist measurement from this point this fitting point my waist measurement is 33 inches so i'm going to have 3.8.25 so i'm going to take my 8.25 from this point this fitting point and that is going to end here so you can see what i have so this is my waist measurement now i'm going to connect with a curve ruler i'm going to connect with a curve ruler this way like this my crease line for me to get my crease line i'm going to measure from this end to this crotch extension please you will not get to this extension just between this line and this line that is where i'm going to measure and find the midpoint so which is what i'm doing now you know i had 9.75 so so i'm going to find the midpoint of that 9.75 which is what I'm doing now. So I have it here. So I now go back with one CM. Just come back with one CM. So that's my crease line. So before I go further. I also want to insert my knee point. So for me to get my knee point, I'm going to measure from this crotch seat to the length of my trouser. You can see what I have. I have 33.5. So I'm going to find the half of it. 33.5. I'm going to find the half of it so half of it now i have this half here so i'm going to go up by two inches i'm going to go up by two inches that is my knee point so i will square it across like so so that's my knee point. That's how to get your knee point. Find the midpoint. So now that I have my knee point, I want to square down my crease line. So what do I have as my crease line? I want to measure it and put it down to the end line. So I have 5.25. So I'm going to do the 5.25 here as well. And I'm going to put it at the hem as well. Then I square it down as a straight line. So that's my first line. Okay, now I want to determine my, I want to insert my, my knee measurement. So my knee measurement, my round knee for, while my round knee is 18. When I divide 18 by 2, remember all the division I've been doing, I've been dividing by 4. But this time, my round knee, I'm going to divide it by 2. So when I divide 18 inches by 2, I have 9. So I'm going to insert that 9 on both sides of this line. So here I have 4.5, I have 
and 4.5 on both sides. So for this particular trouser, I want to do a pencil trouser. So what that means is that my 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 knee is going to be wider than the M of the trouser. So if I insert four nine inches here, I'm going to reduce that nine inches so that I'll have a penciled trouser. So on this side too, I'm going to do I did I did 4.5 so here I'm going to do 3.5 on both sides. I'm going to do 3.5 and 3.5 which is 7 inches. So I'm going to connect in the straight line. The way I'm doing right now. So you can see I have my front then I'm going to connect this one I'm going to connect my hip my waist to my hip with a straight line as well you can see what I have now so I have my front pattern I have my front pattern so I haven't gotten my front pattern okay. so I have my front pattern highlighted in black so I'm going to start drafting my back pattern now so for my crotch my back crotch extension I'm going to measure what I have here as the extension for the front which is like I have one point one point six so I'm going to extend my back with that one point six you can see it I'm measuring it now measure what you have here I have one point six so I'm going to extend it by one point six one point six and I'm going to drop it half inch I'm going to drop it half inch so I'm going to connect it this way why am I dropping my back so that it will relax and you have it to be equal with the front by the time you are joining it because if you do not drop it for five with 0 0.5 at the end of the day when you are joining your shoulder the front is going to be shorter so that's why we have this thing so now i'm going to come down to my knee measurement from this knee now i add 2 cm sorry 2 cm i'm going to add 2 cm because the back panel is usually bigger than the front because of the bust that is at the back so I'm going to add 2 cm all the way to the end. I'm going to add 2 cm all the way to the end. 2 cm also to my head. So I'm going to connect it with a straight line. So I'm also going to add 2 cm to this other part, this other side. So before I do that, I'm going to clean this borderline because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to clean it off so that I will not get confused. So I've cleaned up the borderline. 
So I'm going to extend this gesture by 2 cm please take note 2 cm not inches 2 cm I'm going to extend it to 2 cm all the way down So I'm going to connect this like so. Okay. So I have that there. Now I want to come back to the upper part of my measurement. Now my tie measurement is um, 24 so i'm going to divide 25 24 by 2 i have 12. so uh, since i'm dividing it i'm going to share it between the front and the back so i'm going to measure what i have here for my front so what i have is like 11.25 so for me to get the 24, I'm going to take out, I'm going to start my measurement from here to get my 24. You can see where my 24 ended. And I'm going to add 2 cm for ease. Please don't forget. You can add as much as 4 cm, but I just want to use 2 cm because I don't want it to be too much i don't i want a very fitted trouser so i measured what i have here let me go through it again i have 11.25 so i'm remo removing that 11.25 from 24 so i'll measure from that 11.25 to get my 24 and this is my 24 so I'm going to add 2 cm for ease. Like I said, you can add as much as 4 cm. So I just want only 2 cm. So that is it. So I'll connect it like this to this line. You can see that my back, my back too is taking shape. So now I want to work on this upper part. On this upper part now, I want to do my raising based on my table that I'm using. My back fitting is 5 cm. So I'm going to take the fitting from this point, it's 5 cm. So I'm going to take my back fitting. From this point, I'm going to take 5 cm to bring off this line in order to not to get us confused. It's supposed to be like a border, so I'm going to bring it off so that you understand. So I have my back fitting here. From this point, I'm going to do my back raising. My back raising. My back raising is. 1.5 from this point so i'm going to mark my 1.5 here this is my 1.5 so now from this 1.5 i'm going to take my measure my waist measurement so my my waist measurement is 8.25 then my based on our on our uh, table back that is 1.25 so I have 9.5. So I'm going to insert my waist measurement and the dart from this point on the slant. I have 9.5. So I'm going to mark it this way. This is my back waist measurement. This is my 9.5. So I'm going to slant and connect with a straight line. Like this. So, 
okay then i connect this to this line my eight measurement on the eight line so now my eight measurement is uh, 42 so if i divide it by two i'm going to have 21 so from this cross this place this curve i'm going to take i want to check what i have here on my hip so i have i have like nine point nine point seven five so from this my baseline i'm going to put my nine point seven five nine point seven five i'm taking it out of the measurement so i'm going to measure it this way on my hip line 9.75 in order to get my 21 so this is my 21 that's my hip measurement you can add an you can add a, an ease to it but i don't really like adding ease so I'm going to connect this now to my right here. Connect it this way. Then I connect with my the covula. So that's my back cross. That's my back cross and I'm going to connect it. Straight line. So. so now I have my front and back pattern together on this paper right now so in order not to get confused i'm going to use blue marker to trace out my back pattern okay before i do that i'm going to i want to insert the position of my dart for the back if you notice there was no dart on the front pattern because of all the fittings that has been done already on the front pattern so you do not need to insert another dart but for the back we added a dart so we need to take it out so this is it i'm going to find the midpoint of this line which is where i'm going to insert my dart so i have it here so the length of the back that is you can you can take as much as five inches but i'm going to do just four i'm going to do four so that's the length then what we added is 1.25 so i'm going to take out the 1.25 on both sides so i have 1.25 so i'm going to fold it this way to mark it so that i can be accurate so I have one on this side. I have one on the other side. So that's my dart. And I'm going to connect it like we are saying now. Okay, so. So now I'm going to trace out the back pattern so
So I'm done tracing the pattern. So you can see it. You can see both our front and our back pattern neatly made. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave your comments. If you have any question, you can leave it in the comment section. I will be waiting to give answers to your questions. Thank you. See you on our next video. Bye.